guys, it's Emma and I'm back today for you with another video. And today we're gonna be petty. Today we are unlocking our inner haters. And by that, I mean, uh, if you didn't like this book, read this one instead, okay? Uh, Cause I have read a few books where I have realized that they are not what I signed up for. This was not in my contract. This, however, um, I'm willing to negotiate on, okay? Editing Emma here. Um, I just want to put before the video starts a little disclaimer. Um, if I end up trash talking your favorite book, uh, it is not personal whatsoever. Some of these books I just really didn't like, okay? And uh, reading is subjective, opinions are subjective. Um, and if I end up quote unquote replacing your book with uh, what I believe to be a better alternative, just know, like I said, it is nothing personal. With that being said, let me know down below whether or not you guys have any books that are like this, you know, uh, two that are very similar, but one is just monumentally better than its non-biological sibling, okay? Um, and with that being said, let's just get right into it. If you didn't like The Ritual by Adam Neville, please, 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 from the bottom of my heart, uh, from the marrow of my wishbone, I beg of you to read The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This is basically about four friends who, uh, did something, uh, that was a big no-no, and now they're paying the price for it, essentially, uh, when a malevolent force comes back to kill them all. This book, monumentally better, all right, than what the four friends did in this monstrosity, okay? Uh, while this one is littered with sentence fragments and run-ons, this is littered with incredibly realistic human thought, okay? Um, Stephen Graham Jones writes human thought in circumstances of fear and adrenaline very, very realistically and very well, I believe. Um, he writes it very choppy, which makes sense. You're not thinking very clearly when you're in a situation such as that. The antagonistic force and all of the lore in this book is so much more cohesive and coherent and just scarier, in my opinion, than the atrociousness that happened in the ritual, okay? So forget about the ritual, read The Only Good Indians, and while you're at it, read other Stephen Graham Jones books. If you didn't like The Siren by Kira Cass, uh, then please, by all means, read Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen. This is about Simi, a mamiwata, or a mermaid, who works for a goddess, and she basically uh, collects uh, people who die at sea. Until one day she saves a boy from drowning, which is a big no-no, and uh, in order to protect the other mamiwata and the goddess that she works for, she herself has to not only take the boy home, but um, also go to the Supreme Creator and beg for forgiveness. Uh, but it's really not that simple. <laughs> the lore in here is extensive, intricate, complex, um, and just it's African mermaids. And it deals not only with the mermaids from African uh, cultures, but also unicorns, fairies, everything such as that. And Simi herself, she's just such a good character to follow. Whereas, um, I don't even remember homegirl's name in this one. Uh, she she was just a walking pity party, okay? She had to make everything about herself. Um, everything was about her, herself, and her, okay? Uh, meanwhile, Simi, she's, sh she is just a doll to follow. Just the story in here, in my opinion, had just a lot more going for it. The plot did, anyway. Um, it's not more so centered on the romance like the siren was, and the siren being centered on the romance, when the romance itself really wasn't that good, was not very lucrative, okay? So, Skin of the Sea, however, being not focused on a romance and having the romance as a subplot was phenomenally more well done, okay? So, if you thought that uh, the main character from The Siren was just unbearable, insufferable, and kind of too much like uh, the bad sides of Miss Elena Gilbert, um, read Skin of the Sea, okay? It's amazing, it's fun, it's short, and uh, I believe it's now gonna be a trilogy. If you were not a fan of the blasé behemoth known as the Spanish Love Deception, then by all means, in its place, Read Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is about the aforementioned titular Chloe Brown, who uh, is basically realizing that her life she finds to be 
pretty boring. She comes up with a list of things to do, a bucket list basically. So in order to complete her list, she enlists the help of someone who lives in her building, Red. And um, one of the things on the list is to have meaningless sex and maybe Red can help her with that and maybe with some other things, you never know. The Spain is Love Deception was way too damn long, okay? It was like 500 something pages. Get a Life Chloe Brown, 365. And a breeze to get through when I tell you. And also, um, an even better thing about this book is that uh, we don't have the horrific trend of he's so big. He's so much bigger than her. Oh my god, he's twice her height. Screw it. He's triple her height. Um, his legs are tree trunks. His arms are about bigger than her head. He can literally pick her up with one arm. Congratulations. Now I'm thinking of a daughter and her father. I can't. It's disgusting. Uh, the Spanish love deception was rife with that. The whole enemies to lovers thing was ridiculous. A little Miss Catalina in here, she was beefing with a dude who gave her a bad look. You're a grown woman in a grown woman job, okay? In here, it's more just like rivals to lovers, I would say, and uh, the smut and the dirty talk is actually good, and there's no mentions of milking in this book. If you were like me and you did not like the Spanish Love Deception, uh, if it just like uh, was a downward spiral from the very first page, read Get a Life Chloe Brown, okay? If you didn't like True Grit, then please let me introduce you to Little Heaven. It's about three bounty hunters who are uh, basically recruited by this woman to go and check on her nephew uh, in this isolated uh, cult religious cult camp. And uh, when the three of them actually do end up going to see whether or not this kid is good, uh, they find out that this camp is about to undergo changes of biblical proportions. True Grit, I didn't hate it, but I thought it was bland, all right? I thought it was bland. I honestly thought it was very boring. Little Heaven, however, is one of my favorite books of all time, okay? Uh, there's a lot of trigger warnings in it. Definitely look those up before you do, um, but I absolutely loved this. It was disturbing. It was creepy. It was horrifying. It was sad. It was incredibly sad. I cried at the very end of it. I didn't expect myself to, okay? Uh, Little Heaven is just something completely different. It's a disturbing cowboy story, I would say. It is definitely something that I will never forget. It's got pictures in it that are, uh, interesting okay so no i would say if you're looking for another disturbing book to read definitely check out little heaven true grit true grit i would say is just something to read just to get it under your belt i guess uh if you didn't like frankenstein like me read marina okay marina is basically about this girl and a boy and they basically uh become friends and they try to solve this mystery that's been going on that's gone unsolved and has become very very sinister um and it all starts with them watching this woman in a black veil and a black dress come every thursday of like whenever she does in the month and place however many flowers on an unmarked grave and that's how it starts frankenstein I'm sorry, in my opinion, is boring. Um, Frankenstein retellings, they're boring to me, all right? How, how many Frankenstein retellings, how many Frankenstein stories am I gonna see before I die? Hmm? My ghost is gonna carve the tally marks on the side of my coffin, okay? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm personally just tired of Frankenstein and I had to read this for school. Marina, however, is dark. She's gothic, all right? Uh, she's also translated from Spanish. Um, and just, I don't know, there's a really dark mystery going on that honestly involves a, a maid or a put together creature. Um, kind of like Frankenstein. So I would say if you did like the creature aspect of Frankenstein and kind of like the creep, creepiness of it, definitely read Marina. I don't know. I just think it's a better mystery and just a creepier book than Frankenstein overall. If you were irked by Sour Candy by Caitlin Patrick Burke, then I invite you to heal that irk by reading Anoka by Shane Hawk. All right, this is a collection of 
five, six, seven, eight, nine short stories that are all based around Native American folklore. And just wow. This anthology is one of the few anthologies that I've given five stars to. Every story in here was methodical, it was concise, it left you guessing at the very end, practically gasping for more. Um, it has a really cool werewolf story in here, and like I said, every single story is mixed up with Native American legends and myths, and it's just really, really neat. Okay, Sour Candy, just like all of a sudden I'm supposed to believe that these cloaked things have tentacles underneath? Where did the tentacles come from? All right, I don't like seafood. Where did the tentacles come from? Where did they, how did they end up on my plate? The ending, in my opinion, was very hastily put together. And I just left this book feeling very, very, very unsatisfying. So goodbye to Sour Candy, all right? Hello, Anoka. Uh, just a short story collection that honestly kept me guessing and at the edge of my seat. Lastly, this is one that I'm very vehement about. Um, if you are like me and you were not a part of the fan club of The Power by Naomi Alderman, then I beseech you to instead read When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. In 1955, uh, there was a mass dragoning where thousands of housewives and just women all over the country uh, became dragons and flew away. And it's basically about... Uh, this one girl named Alex who is struggling with the aftermath of the dragoning and just, you know, how uh, society looks at women and dragons in and of themselves after this event. I love this, okay? The power, look. The feminism and the power, to me, was incredibly whitewashed. Why was your only black main character just there to be a porthole for us to look through and also a um, an object for other white women to lust over, huh? Why was he there? What purpose did he serve? While I'm bashing the feminism in the power, it is better in uh, When Women Were Dragons. However, there are some kinks to it, okay? Um, while I think the representation is better in When Women Were Dragons, it's definitely not the best. Okay, while we do actually see women of color uh, dragoning, and while we do see uh, LGBTQIA plus women dragoning, uh, we're only told about them, we're not shown them. So it's kind of uh, a tug of war thing between bad representation versus uh, a little representation. So take from that what you will. I liked Women Were Dragons because, you know, due to all of these women becoming dragons, dragons, the word dragon is now seen as more of a feminine word and it's now uh, kind of being pushed into the taboo section along with menstruation, pregnancy, stuff that you, other feminine stuff that you just can't talk about, that isn't polite in society to talk about in public, everything like that. And I really thought that was interesting. And yeah, just just the whole concept of the dragons in here was so cool. While I love this book, I do think that there are some things that could be done much better to make it better. Um, however, in terms of being related to the power, <laughs> I think it's monumentally better. So you guys, that was, if you didn't like this book, read this one instead. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can find some recommendations that are better uh, than the previous ones you've possibly read because, oh my goodness gracious, um, do I hold a grudge? Uh, it's a pastime, honestly, should be considered so. Anyway, you guys, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed. I hope that you will look out for more videos on my channel, um, that you guys are staying safe, and that you guys have a good rest of your day. Goodbye!